Hi everyone. Today I have a really interesting case. A patient was referred to me. She is a young uh, lady who had refractive lens exchange and she had panoptics lens implants. However, after the initial surgery, the lens implant wasn't centered very well and the patient had poor quality vision. And so the doctor thought maybe it's because of the centration. So they went back in there and tried to center the lens. And when they were doing that, they put in a CTR, a capsule tension ring, to try to stabilize the bag to make sure that it has good support and therefore supports the lens centration. However, during the CTR implantation, when the doctor was putting in the CTR, they encountered a challenge where he thought that the CTR could be partially in the bag and partially in the anterior chamber. And so he had to grab the CTR from the anterior chamber and try to position it posteriorly where it should be in the back. And during that maneuver, the patient started bleeding, which took away visibility. And so now the patient has had two surgeries. They had some bleeding in the eye, so they weren't seeing anything. And the doctor was concerned that the CTR was not in the correct place. And afterwards, the lens wasn't centered uh, perfectly either, and the patient had poor quality vision. So uh, the patient was referred to me. On examination, there was some peaking to the capsule that looked like maybe the CTR was partially in the bag, partially in the sulcus, uh, but not 100% sure. And so we're gonna do her case and try to inspect everything and change this lens for her. And uh, we'll see how she does. Here we are at the start of the case and look at that capsular contraction. So many wrinkles and folds. The lens is slightly decentered temporarily, but not horrible. And I'm opening up the previous incisions using a Sinsky hook. I can understand why the primary surgeon wanted to put a CTR, hoping to keep that capsule expanded and on stretch. Here I'm administering some intracameral preservative-free lidocaine with epi, and then followed by viscoelastic. This is dispersive. I'm inspecting the eye and I thought I was going to see the CTR at one of these peaked areas of the capsule, but I don't see it. I'm going to start opening up the capsule bag, so I use a, a sharp tip spatula and I open the capsule where the haptic optic junction is. And then I'm going to use viscoelastic to expand the capsular bag, especially focusing on the area where the haptics are laying in the fornix of the capsule. And I want to be very generous with the viscoelastic, but also make sure that I'm paying attention to the intraocular pressure. Here I'm going behind the haptic and optic injecting viscoelastic, and I'm going to try to free the bulb of the haptic with viscoelastic. I use a Sinsky to try to free the haptic, and this one comes out pretty easily. I find that when the capsule is adherent, it helps to glide the Sinsky along the haptic. Now I'm shifting my attention to the other haptic bulb, and so I'm being generous with the viscoelastic and injecting posterior and anterior to the bulb. And then again, I'll use my Sinsky to see if it's freed up. And this one also comes out fairly easily. I bring the IOL into the anterior chamber using IOL graspers and cutters by MST. It's very easy to cut the panoptics lens. I simply cut it in half. If you don't have IOL cutters, you could do a twist out technique. You can expand your incision, but cutting it in half with MST forceps is a piece of cake. So then I just take out each half one at a time. This patient was a high myope, so there's a lot of space in the anterior chamber, but you do want to make sure that the capsule is inflated and the posterior capsule is away from the action. All right, so now on to the CTR. Where is this thing? I'm using a Kuglin hook. I think for a second, is that the CTR? But that's just the fibrotic capsule that encased the haptic. The pupil dilates really well, but I'm using my Kuglin hook to give me max exposure. I'm pushing the iris all the way back, essentially to its root, all the way to the limbus. But I don't see the CTR. I'm using my second instrument to massage the edges of the capsule just to see if I can relax those folds and make it more round. Is the CTR in the bag? I don't see the eyelets anywhere. Is it in the sulcus, possibly? 
the patient does have a very big eye and perhaps a very large capsular bag. If the CTR is in the sulcus, it would not be compressed, so it would be larger than usual. So it could be impossible to see unless you use ultrasound, but in my search, I don't see it. So it's either in the bag, and if it's in the bag, great, but I don't see the eyelets. Normally you can see the eyelets when you push the iris out that far. Um, or it's in the sulcus, if the CTR is in the sulcus. At least it's very smooth and small, and it should be able to sit there safely. It's not designed for that, but we put three-piece lenses in the sulcus safely all the time, and so this is basically just like a haptic sitting in the sulcus. If I don't see it, I'm not gonna try to reach blindly into the sulcus to grab it. This patient during her second surgery, she had bleeding, so I don't want something like that to happen again. And so I'm gonna very carefully look for the uh, CTR, but if I don't see it, as long as it's not partially in the bag and partially out, I think the patient will do well. And since I don't see it, I think it's time to put the replacement lens in the bag. Since a YAG capsulotomy was not performed and we didn't harm the posterior capsule, it makes this sort of exchange fairly routine. Um, after insertion, I see this little sterile filament, so I just don't want to leave that. I take that out. And then, and then it's really bothering me that I don't see this CTR. So here I am yet again, checking as far as possible and it's not visible. I remove all the viscoelastic and I take my time doing this because I was using dispersive viscoelastic and so it doesn't come out very easily. So I just take my time. To keep the AC formed, I irrigate with BSS prior to removing my IA probe. If the patient ever had symptoms from the CTR, such as UGG syndrome, then a UBM or anterior segment ultrasound can be used to confirm its position. And in the unlikely scenario where it needs to be removed, perhaps an endoscope can be used to help visualize it. Next, I'm going to check for vitreous. So I use some dilute triamcinolone, and fortunately, no vitreous came across the uh, zonules. I just wanted to make sure because my instruments, I was using them very far peripherally. Finally, I seal my incisions and make sure that the eye pressure is normal. Let's take a look at how the patient did afterwards. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at it right here. Okay, rest your chin if you can on that chin rest. Beautiful, and bring your head forward. Awesome, just like that. All right, cool. And just look uh, straight ahead towards me. Beautiful, just like that. Good job. All right, I'm just looking at all around. It looks great. So far, the lens looks really, really good. I'm going to show it here on this. And you can just keep looking straight ahead towards me. All right, because we're just one day out right now. But it looks nicely centered. I'm going to turn it this way. All right, good. Very good. Blink. All right, open as wide as you can. Perfect. Just like that is great. All right. So before, uh, before we exchange the lens, you had the panoptics lens in your eye. Tell me about the quality of vision that you were having with that lens. When I got it right away, it was um, foggy. Okay. So I had like a haze over my eyes. So I thought as I would heal, maybe the haze would go away. Yeah. And for me, the haze never went away. And then I was noticing in my left eye, I was almost seeing double. Like if I looked at the letters, I would see an L and a slight L behind it. So was it like a ghosting? Very ghosting. Yeah. There was not a drawing of it, but I could see it. Yeah. And then that is when my, um, our first doctor decided that it was misplaced. D dislocated. dislocated. It wasn't centered. And it was a little bit decentered, uh, that's for sure. Um, and so that was an issue, but it wasn't correctable. Even when, when we were trying to check for glasses, because sometimes people get a lens and maybe they have a prescription that's off and they just need a laser touch up. But no matter what, the, the vision was out of focus. It wasn't good quality vision to you. No. And tell me about, you had a lot of light sensitivity as well. So I had a lot of light sensitivity and I saw halos in everything. So if you looked at 
um, for instance, if I looked at the TV, there was also a whole glare around the yeah. TV as well. Yeah. So. Did you try driving? Were you comfortable driving? Absolutely not. Yeah. Couldn't drive even if I wanted to. During the yeah. day, I could only go short distance yeah. because as my eyes would try to focus and they, yeah. I would start to get tired, the halos and the brightness would become more and I needed to go home. Yeah, yeah. And just kind of be in the dark. Sure. And so we just did this surgery yesterday. Um, we put in the new lens. So the lens we put in is called the Aspire by Bachelot. So it's a really good quality lens, specifically for distance. Um, and so one day out, how are you feeling so far? What amazing. Are Absolutely amazing. I, my opinion, this eye is already sharper than this eye, but this eye is pretty sharp. Okay. So that eye, the, her right eye has a pan optics, but it's centered well. Okay. So it's centered well. Um, and she um, was doing well with her right eye. And so now we're going to see if the eyes work well together. All right. So we're going to give it some time to heal. But how are your eyes working together so far? So far, I love it. I, this one is super sharp for distance, and this one's sharp. Got it. And then this one, obviously, I can't see up close, but this one corrects it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm already, I'm like, if everything is good and it works, I'm good. Great. Yeah. Great. A lot of people, um, when they have surgery, they always assume they have to have the same lens in each eye. But that's not the case. If someone has complaints, for example, of nighttime glare, and we're going to do a procedure, we want to focus on what's bothering them the most. And uh, if your reading was weak, for example, we would have focused on trying to get you better reading. With your left eye, you really had a problem with the quality of your vision. And so we wanted to give you a lens that gives really high quality vision. Hopefully the eyes work well together, continuing to work well together where you get the best of both worlds, where you can see far without glasses and your right eye helps you read without glasses. I think for people who have your setup where one eye is reading and the other one is far, I mean, your case is even better. Both are far and one eye is reading. The reading would be very helpful. Let's say you're at a restaurant and you need to read a menu. You know, you don't have to pull out your reading glasses. Um, so for text messages, for example, your right eye will let you read it. Um, if you were going to sit for a few hours and read a book, you would be more comfortable with the left eye helping it read too. So sure. in that case, if you're going to sit down and read a book, you might want to have a pair of reading glasses for that. But when you're active and you're out and about, the right eye and left eye should work really well, to get well together. So far, Good. this is, yeah, it's awesome. Good. You were having some discomfort before as well. H how's that doing? My discomfort is, so... Even after the surgery yesterday, I went home and I went to sleep and I had no pain. My first, no, the second surgery when they did the ring and everything, I was in tremendous, tremendous pain right away. Yeah. To the point where I had to call the doctor and they had to call eye drops in um, and we had to go to a pharmacy to get the eye drops just to numb it. And then that's when I woke up the next day and everything was black because I had bleeding yeah. in the eye. So that was that surgery. This surgery, I have no pain at all. I have zero, zero, Great. zero pain. Great. So for those of you watching, she had an initial refractive lens exchange. When the lens implant was decentered, they went back again to try to recenter it. They put it in a capsule tension ring, tried to recenter it, um, but she had uh, some bleeding, a little bit of a hyphema, which is blood in the eye. And so she didn't have a good experience, unfortunately. And so uh, we're basically done with trying to reposition a panoptics lens that wasn't working for her. And so we felt that the safest thing would be to exchange the lens. Uh, and she was very uh, reasonable with her expectations and said, look, if I can see good for far, I'm okay with readers. I just want to see well. And so we decided that exchanging the lens would be the best uh, next step for her. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank All you. All right. Super excited. <laughs> good. I'll see. We'll see you next week. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. Good.